Southern Maryland, American Legion Post 221, Avenue, Maryland. Today we're going to go over the history of the United States flag. We'd like to chronicle the different development stages of the flag and kind of show you a little bit of uh, the basic history of it before it actually became our nation's flag. My name is Mike Barber. Today we have several individuals with us. The first two gentlemen that will be presenting the flag, Mr. George Kennett and Mr. Dan Ion. As you can see, we have a flag that's got a white background with the red cross. This is actually the flag of England back in the early 1600s. The cross is the cross of St. George. So this is the national flag of England. We choose this for our starting point because most of the colonists that came over during that time frame immigrated from England. So at the time their ship came over, this is the flag they would be flying on their ship. Thank you, gentlemen. With us today also, we have Mr. Tommy Howe and Mr. Francis Gibson, and they're displaying the flag of Scotland. The flag of Scotland was carried by King James VI, who was in the, uh, in the throne at the time in Scotland. Also, in 1603, when Queen Elizabeth I died, she didn't have an heir apparent, so she dictated that King James VI of Scotland would then become King of England as well. So when James came over to England, he then became James I of England, still retaining his title as James VI of Scotland. And you'll see why that's important with our next flag. But this one is the saltire of St. Andrew, the cross or the saltire of St. Andrew. Our next flag shows what happens when you combine St. George's Cross with the saltire of St. Andrew. We call this the Union Flag. The Union Flag is the basis for the creation of Great Britain, those two countries coming together. And you'll see how this Union Flag plays out in the canton of our next flag, the British Naval Red Ensign. Thank you, gentlemen. Our next flag, the British Naval Red Ensign, shows that we have the Union flag in its canton. Now significant here, the Navy used the red background. The British service could also have used yellow or blue, depending on the particular service displaying it. So this flag is very important to remember because this is going to be the basis for our next flag. This is the British Naval Red Ensign. Thank you, gentlemen. With our next flag, you'll see that we took the British Naval Red Ensign and we added six white stripes. When you add the six white stripes to that red background, you then have 13 alternating red and white stripes. The colonists chose that design to show that, yes, they are still subjects of the crown. However, they wanted to be recognized as 13 colonies that were distinctly separate from the crown proper. So with this flag, we called it the Grand Union flag. It also was called the Continental Colors because this is the flag that the Continental Army first carried with it as it fought against the British back in the latter part of the 1700s. Thank you, gentlemen. As you can see, the flag has progressed now with the change in the canton. The Grand Union flag's canton was, in fact, the symbol for Great Britain. And when the colonists were using that while they were fighting against the British in 1775, early 1776, the British actually thought that th it was a flag of surrender. And we wanted to do away with that confusion. And the Second Continental Congress looked at that and they said, you know, we have to do something about that. And General George Washington suggested changing the canton altogether to get rid of the British Union flag in the canton because we are now 
telling the British that we want to declare our independence. So on June 4, 1777, the Continental Congress came out with the first Flag Act. The first Flag Act simply stipulated that we shall have a flag of our now United States. We're no longer colonies under the crown. We are United States. And to show that, we're going to show our 13 United States with 13 alternating red and white stripes. And in the canton, we will have 13 stars representing those states. And it will be on a blue background signifying a new constellation in the universe. So this first flag design was submitted to Congress by a fellow by the name of Francis Hopkinson. So the first official United States flag is called the Hopkinson flag. Now there were many different 13 star flags because the Congress didn't dictate in what order the stars should be. So we have 25 different recorded names for different flags. We're going to show you three of those. And this was the first one, though, the Hopkinson flag. Of particular note, you'll see six points on this star on the Hopkinson flag. In future versions of the flag, you'll just see five points. We had actually 27 different iterations of the United States flag throughout its history. We're going to show just a few of them today, but we want to show you the first American flag. Thank you, gentlemen. The next 13 star flag we'd like to show is the Cowpens flag. And the name came about because the Maryland 3rd Regiment went down to Cowpens, South Carolina, and fought in the Battle of Cowpens, and they carried this flag with them. They still have this flag today of, of historical significance in Annapolis. And we look at it with the star in the middle. We suppose that is to represent Maryland as the Maryland Red 3rd Regiment was comprised of five different Maryland counties at the time. So this is our Cowpens 13 star flag. Thank you, gentlemen. Please. The third 13 star flag we're going to show today is what's commonly known as the Betsy Ross flag. This is one that most people are very familiar with, and you'll see this at the inauguration. You'll see it at various different patriotic events. And this flag, you'll notice, is different from the Cowpens flag in that we have all 13 stars in a circle. And they were put there in that particular configuration to show that all 13 colonies were equal, that none were better or bigger or had more of a voice than the other one that all shared equal responsibility for the establishment of our now you new United States of America. You'll notice also we still have the 13 stripes and the 13 stars. And this has five points on the star. The thing about the Betsy Ross flag, really the historians point out that the first recorded sighting of the flag wasn't actually until 1792. And that was after the Revolutionary War was over. So it's a little bit of a, a misunderstanding about exactly when this flag surfaced. But we call this the Betsy Ross flag, and you'll see it flying at the Betsy Ross house. Matter of fact, any of the flags that we've shown you today can be flown at the appropriate times or the appropriate places where there is a historical tie to that flag and still be legal to do so by the flag code. Thank you, Kevin. As we continued to add more states to our union, it became necessary to add more stars. And Congress said, well, we're going to also add more stripes. So you'll see in this particular flag, it's a 15 star, 15 stripe flag created by the Flag Act of 1794. This is also the flag that was flown in the Battle of Baltimore up at Fort McHenry. So it's very significant that this is the one that uh, we looked at for the penning of our Star Spangled Banner. 
So very significant. And a very large flag flies over Fort McHenry today. So 30 by 42 is the size of that flag over there. It's humongous. So this one, the significance is we now have the stars at 15 and the stripes. If you count the stripes going down, are at 15 to show the 15 states when we added Vermont and Kentucky to the mix. Thank you, John. As you can see, our flag has changed once again. When we added Tennessee, Ohio, Louisiana, Indiana, and Mississippi, those five states changed our number to 20. But the Congress looked at that and said, well, wait a minute. When they passed the Flag Act of 1818, they said, you know, we got to stop adding these stripes. Because if we do, they're going to be so small, that it's going to be hard to see. So they dictated that, OK, instead of adding stripes for each state, we'll now add stars for each state, which now gives us 20. But we're going to revert back to the original 13 stripes. So this is our 20 star. 13 stripe flag by virtue of the Flag Act of 1818. Thank you, John. As we continue to add more states to the Union, you can see that our field in the Canton became rather populated. In 1912, we had actually added New Mexico and Arizona, and we came up with the 48 stars, at that time cumulative, and President Taft dictated the arrangement of the stars when we had 48 states in the Union. So this flag flew all the way up until 1959. So the next flag we're going to show you what happens when we not add one star, but we're going to actually jump ahead and add two stars the next time. Thank you. We're now displaying our current 50-star flag. The 50-star flag became official in 1959. Now, you'll wonder, why didn't we show a 49-star flag? Yes, when we added Alaska, they did, in fact, have a 49-star flag, but it was very short-lived, because right on the heels behind that, Hawaii became a state in 1959. And whenever we add a new state to the Union, on July 4th, following the admission of that state to the Union, is when we come up with the new flag design and we codify the new flag. So our 50-star flag was codified on July 4th, 1960. And it has stood ever since. If we were to add another state, whether it be a district or whether it be one of our trust territories, we would then change the configuration to add a 51st star if and when that were to occur. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching our presentation today. Understand there are 27 different versions of the flag through the years. We've just gave, given you a perspective and a relative sampling of those flags. Hopefully you've gained a better understanding of the development of our flag through our presentation. Thank you.